do you still believe that Mahaparta happened and all those people we heard of walked the same land as us? We can know the real answer by asking yourself this question why Mahaparta and the Vedas still influence modern weaponry and combat science. Mainstream scientists will hate it, so will the pseudo-intellectuals, but as Albert Einstein had once said, imagination is more powerful than knowledge. Since time immemorial, mankind has been experiencing different kinds of warfare in all the dimensions possible. Back in those days waging war was more or less intended to eliminate evil and to establish truth for which highly sophisticated weapons were used only when they needed it the most to avoid any possible large-scale demolition and collateral damage. Yes, that was the power and technology they had thousands of years back. Mahaparta is one of the two major epics of ancient India and is written in Sanskrit. It consists of the epic narrative of the Kurukshetra war apart from the devotional and philosophical aspects of the goals of life. The Kurukshetra war had witnessed a lot of ancient weaponry which was far more advanced and futuristic than what we possess today. The concept of Astra missile and Dhanush launchers emerged from there. Astra was a supernatural hand-carried weapon blessed by a specific deity. The function of an Astra is more than that of a missile. It is said that Astra's used in Mahaparta probably might have also used technologies of emitting most dangerous rays like gamma and others which have exceptional powers to penetrate. Some Astra's returns to the person who launches it, for instance Krishna's Sudarsana Chakra. This may be similar to the reusable missiles which the Indian Space Research Organization ISRO is working on. How could it be possible to manufacture such advanced weapons thousands of years ago without knowing the complex technology and without having large-scale industrial infrastructure? Well, those weapons were guided by some kind of alien GPS system for long-range targets and commanded by the mantras which are similar to today's logins and passwords. Astras were also used for defensive purposes similar to a Tesla shield which is used to destroy the enemy astra coming towards it. Directed energy weapons Laser. like high energy lasers could be a game changer in future wars. Laser weapon systems are earning their way onto the battlefield. The modern Tesla shield discharges electrical energy and any incoming physical object which hits the shell receives an enormous discharge of that energy and instantly vaporizes. It can also be compared to the anti-missile air defense system of the modern times. India has a beyond visual range air-to-air -air missile, VRAM, named Astra. Astra is designed to be capable of engaging targets at varying ranges and altitudes allowing for engagement of both short-range targets up to 20 kilometers and long-range targets up to 80 kilometers using alternative propulsion modes and the missile is technologically more sophisticated than the nuclear-capable Agni missile series of strategic ballistic missiles. There are many weapons used in Mahaparta. Astras like Brahmashira, Brahmastra, Pasupatastra, Vaishnavastra, Narayana Astra, Agnyastra, Bayavastra, Nagastra, Vajrasra, Varunastra, etc. were used in Mahaparta along with positive indications of the use of nuclear weapons, otherwise how could the war cause the death of around 1.5 billion people in a matter of 18 days? The wide degree of devastation found at the site of Mahanjo Daro corresponds exactly to Nagasaki. Davenport, who published his findings in a book named, Atomic Destruction in 2000 B. C. in 1979 had said that there was an epicenter about 50 yards wide where everything was crystallized, fused or melted. Barbarica, a character in Mahaparta, had the ability to mark its targets either to save it or to destroy it with the help of his unique asteroids. From the south, arrived on the battlefield. Only with three arrows, he came to battle. With one arrow, I can kill all the Kauravas. With one arrow, I can kill all the Pandavas. So, three is more than enough for me. When Krishna heard this boast, he said, why don't you show what kind of skills you have? And he showed him a banyan tree with thousands and thousands of leaves. He said, let me see with a single arrow how many leaves you can pierce. Babirik used a single arrow with the necessary empowerment of Akkad. And with a single arrow, he pierced every leaf on the tree. And the arrow came and hovered around Krishna's feet, which was over a fallen leaf. Now consider this, India's DRDO has a two-stage missile named NIRBHA which has the capability of picking out a target and attacking it among multiple other objects. The missile also has a loitering capability, i.e., it can circumvent a target and perform several maneuvers and then re-engage it. Also the Vedas, meaning knowledge, comprises of four ancient Indian texts, with the oldest dating back about 1500 BC to 1200 BC. They are also the oldest writings of Hinduism. The four texts of the Vedas include Rigveda, Yajurveda, Samaveda, and Atarvaveda. 
the Vedas influenced many from Nikola Tesla to Bohr and inspired them to explore the new vistas of science and technology and to imagine the unimaginable. Bohr Heisenberg and Schrodinger regularly read Vedic texts. Heisenberg stated, quantum theory will not look ridiculous to people who have read Vedanta. Vedanta is the conclusion of Vedic thought. Henry David Thoreau said, in the morning I bathe my intellect in the stupendous philosophy of the Bhagavad Gita, in comparison with which, our modern world and its literature seems puny and trivial. Julius Robert Oppenheimer, the principal developer of the atomic bomb, stated that the Vedas are the greatest privilege of this century. They won't fear it. Until they understand it. And they won't understand it. Until they've used it. During the explosion of the first atomic bomb, Oppenheimer quoted several Bhagavad Gita verses from the 11th chapter, such as, Death I am, cause of destruction of the worlds. When Oppenheimer was asked if this is the first nuclear explosion, he significantly replied, yes, in modern times, implying that ancient nuclear explosions may have previously occurred. In the end I would just like to say that. It is said that science and religion are not different, it's just that science is too young to understand it. Mahaparta and the Vedas have influenced a generation of the scientists and is still relevant in creating the cutting-edge advanced and futuristic technologies for the mankind, including the modern weaponry and warfare. Um, with the Mahabharata as our popular hero, uh, heroes and heroines, as popular music, um, as our bedtime stories, as our parables on um, morality, on values, the greatest success story of any comic strip is something which is based entirely on the Mahabharata and Ramayana. It's difficult to understand this in the Western context where religion is something you go to church to practice. For us, it's not like that. Children in school, for example, if there is one child who is very strong or very fat, they'll say he's exactly like Bhima. And that is the kind of total livability and uh, contemporariness of the Mahabharata today.